Be sure to visit homeworthy.com slash shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Chad. Welcome to my New Orleans home. Come on in. Let me show you around. Hi, I'm Chad Gracie, principal of Gracie Interiors. Welcome to my New Orleans home. Uh, we're in the Mid-City neighborhood and this is my study. Uh, my home is a 1916 double shotgun house that is now a single shotgun house thanks to me. Um, I'd say that the style of the architecture is a little unique uh, for New Orleans. It is a mashup of sort of late Victorian and craftsman styles. So I liked it. I liked the facade of it because it wasn't so kind of rick racky Victorian. It had a little bit of a streamlined feeling on the front, which really drew me to the house. So right now we are in my formal living room, which also doubles as an entry hall, uh, just because this type of house in New Orleans really didn't have a formal foyer or entry hall. So these rooms really do double duty. And um, this is where if I'm having people over for dinner or drinks, we usually start up here in the front part of the house and then we migrate back to the dining room, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, but typically day to day, come in the door, this is where I put bags, shoes, phone, wallet, keys. I normally have some flowers up here. It's just a good way to sort of start the day, really, to have this surface um, with everything I need to go. These windows are only on the facade of the house. When the house was renovated, um, they changed the windows on the two sides of the house to those, uh, the energy efficient type. And that's why I have these green sort of, uh, these black Japanese shades to hide the not great looking windows that came with the house. But at least we have these beautiful transoms here in the front room and in the study as well. So a shotgun house in New Orleans is a house style that is still popular and has been popular. Basically what it means is if you open up the front door, you can shoot a shotgun from the front door and it'll go out the back of the house. All the rooms are sort of enfiladed one after another. So the house style has been popular uh, just because of the way that the lots and plots of New Orleans were developed. And there's a, there are single shotguns, there are side hall shotguns, there are double shotguns, which means there were two residences that shared a single wall in the middle. So what I've done here is I've taken a double shotgun and punctuated that center wall. And you'll see when we walk through to make it a single family home. Let's check out the living room. In this front part of the house, I really wanted to keep the palette quiet and spare because some of the larger art pieces are here and they really needed some breathing room around them. Um, I wanted to ground the space with this beautiful green velvet sofa and then everything else is just sort of a neutral that plays off of that. Um, I love these chairs because they do, they serve two purposes. They sort of separate this entry and sort of create like a little mini foyer for me. Um, but they have sentimental value as well. These are from my father's office back in the eighties. Uh, he was a practicing architect at one point in time. So these have been with me in my college condo, college apartment. They've been to New York with me and back here. They've had lots of different outfits, but right now they're in a neutral linen silk blend. Um, and this is a great African textile that I dressed up with a little metallic cord from Samuel and Sons. I just, I love the way this brings a subtle pattern and a little bit more color to the room. 
Um, every room, usually in my house, and mostly the ones I design for other people, have a little bit of animal print somewhere. So here I've chosen the uh, classic Scalamandre silk velvet tiger. Um, this literally goes with everything. It's been moved around this house a lot. I love this painting because it reminds me of a trapper keeper that I had in fifth grade, but this is actually a wonderful artist uh, based in New Orleans called Richard Johnson. I have a couple of his pieces. Um, I really love the movement, the layering, and the exuberance of it. And I really love the way that it sort of floats above this heavy, heavier green sofa. This is a chair here that I love. It's actually the most comfortable chair in this room. This I found at a thrift store back in the Ninth Ward and threw it in the back of my car. It now has a J. Robert Scott texture on it. And I really think that the low profile of it um, helps kind of bring you through the space. Um, I wanted to keep things low in here just because, I mean, this is the living room, but you do have to just pass through this room to get to the back of the house. So I didn't really want too many visual barriers in here um, in the way. This is the only tile that's original to the house. Um, actually, I loved the colors and they really did inspire some of the color choices in this room. As you can see, the greens, the browns, the blacks, uh, they really translate through the fabric choices in here. This mantle was here. Um, this mirror is from an estate sale on St. Charles Avenue um, that I definitely had to fight a couple of people for, but <laughs> I always win at those things. Anyway, um, I love the way that this reflects the window opposite it. It's not really a functional fireplace. It was a coal burning fireplace at some point in time, but usually they've been bricked up by this point. So instead of creating a seating group around a non-functional fireplace, I really just wanted to have it feel like a sculptural piece. It's sort of like a defining point in the room. It really does separate this smaller, more intimate seating group from the main seating group. And again, the mirror reflects the window light beautifully and brings a little sparkle back here. Um, I'm definitely not great with plants. So, you know, a preserved boxwood topiary is always a good choice to bring some everlasting green into the space. This wonderful table actually is worth mentioning. This is for my grandmother's house and I've wanted it since I was able to actually know what a table was. <laughs> Uh, so finally, it made its way here to this house. I liked it because it was sort of the most exotic thing I had ever seen as a five-year-old. And it's got elephants and ivory tusks on the bottom. I mean, I know you can't really do that anymore. It's an antique. But I just love the elephant ears. I was obsessed with it for my whole life. And now here it is. Um, it's probably my favorite thing in this room. It's got a lot of sentimental value. Let's talk about this piece, though, because this is a great piece. This is also a thrift store find that was, I think, probably $20, but you know, I had it reframed for about 20 times more than that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I love the way this piece catches the light, especially from the front door, because it's got a, it's got a glass panel on it. So it's a great thing to see. It's not a jarring thing, but I just love the way it creates shadows. And then I did add these beautiful Art Deco sconces. Um, to this wall. It's one of the first things I did buy for the house. I've been on my own for about 15 years now. I lived in New York prior to moving back to New Orleans where I grew up. I worked for David Easton in New York for several years and that was really an, an incredible, inspiring, informative experience. And I think about those times in my decorating career daily. So I'm back in New Orleans since 2009. Um, I lived in a much smaller condo right after I got back from New York. And uh, after seven years of living in 650 square feet, I really was just, it was sort of busting at the seams. I mean, it was art from the baseboards to the crown and every wall. I'm surprised I didn't start putting things on the ceiling. So I knew it was time to find a home where I could finally unpack everything that 
had been in storage, that I had collected, that I've gotten from my family, my mother, my grandparents. You know, it was time to not have to pull out seasonal bins of clothing from under beds and up high in closets. It was just time to sort of, you know, have some space and breathe and really just sort of decorate a place. I mean, I loved my other condo, it was gorgeous. And we had the best parties there. I mean, it was the t somehow the tiniest places are the best party places. But uh, this house has just given me sort of room to breathe. It's, it's now become a design laboratory. Everything's moving, everything's changing all the time. It's a place where you know, can wake up one morning and say, gosh, you know what? Why didn't I paint the bathroom yellow? And I can, it's a place where I can try that out and then really retract that because it's terrible, you know? So anyway, I really, um, I'm really enjoying myself here. Okay guys, follow me into the study this way. There's a lot to see in here. Everyone loves this room um, that comes over here. It's one of my favorite rooms. This is where I spend a lot of time in the morning doing emails and phone calls before heading to the office. Um, this room was actually a third bedroom in the house and this large cased opening was not here. Uh, it had a tiny door with some tiny ugly closets in here and an ugly fan. Um, I knew I needed another public sitting room basically um, for more chairs. So anyway, I created this big cypress opening to match the others you'll see later on in the house tour. So there are three large cypress openings in the house and they, what they do is they really separate the house functionally and, and they, they sort of bring you through. So one's here, there's one that goes to a guest, a guest suite basically. And then the third one separates the dining room to the more casual parts of the house, the kitchen, family room. Um, which we'll explore a little bit later on. Uh, but this room I love because the only thing <laughs> I told my finished carpenter was that I don't care how big these bookcases end up, they have to fit this pull-out sofa, which is a sofa bed for when my niece and nephew come, and these plaster shell inserts that I literally dragged off of a job site 20 years ago and put in the trunk of my car and they have been in storage and following me around forever. So finally, finally, they have a permanent home here. Uh, so those were the things I started with with this room and then everything else kind of grew organically. I've been trying to figure out what this is for a very long time. This was something that my sister and I fought over at an estate sale. So it ended up in her place for a long time. And then I think her children got scared of it. So here it is now. Um, it's an old Chinese piece. It's silk, it's hand painted. I believe it is some sort of Chinese allegory. If anybody knows anything about it after watching this, please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, but it's incredibly beautiful. I've always loved the colors in this piece. I love the scale of it. And I knew immediately this is where it needed to go. I mean, really, this is the best spot for it. The wall color is unique. It's Faroum Ball Churlish Green. And it looks, it's sort of a funny color. It changes throughout the day, but I never tire of it and I love it. And it really does play off some of the greens and browns in the living room, because these two rooms are really visually connected. Um, another fabulous find from Grandma's house is this mid-century black and gold embossed um, armchair. This is another thing that um, I coveted for a long time. But this actually did come with me to New York and this was in my other condo as well. So it'll come with me everywhere. I love it. I never sit in it, but <laughs> it's sentimental value. Um, other good things about this room. Here's lots of, lots of animal moments here. Rug, pillow, another pillow. This chandelier is a 1920s Peter chandelier. This really makes this room, um, well, one of the things that make this room, I love the chandelier. This chandelier will come with me wherever I go. I found that here in New Orleans at a local antique shop, Mac Maison, knew I had to have it. And um, I tried to corral a lot of landscapes in this room just because they just felt natural in here. Um, 
So this is a great piece from auction. I just love the abstracted trees. And then these two mid-century pieces are um, James La Mancha. He's a mid-century artist and he was a professor of architecture at Tulane for a number of years. So I have a couple of his. Whenever I see them come up for auction, I try to grab them. I have three now. Um, they're all, these are just actually Roman, um, Roman landscapes, which I love. I have an affinity for Rome because I studied architecture there for a year in school. This was one of the pieces that I was talking about that sort of came to me, this black lacquer desk. I knew I always wanted one and it came up for auction pretty much immediately after I thought, okay, now it's time to find the black lacquer desk. And here it is now. Um, I always like a little bit of black as well with my animal prints. Um, this is sort of a new addition to this room. I needed something comfortable to sit in. Um, this is in Timothy Corrigan's Schumacher line. I think it's Schumacher. Um, Anjou Stripe. I remembered it, but it's fabulous. I just love the scale, love the pattern. Um, <laughs> the pull-out sofa actually is a cast off from a client. And I had some old curtains from another condo and here they are. So it's very sound of music. Um, you know, curtains to not outfits, but upholstery. I'd love to show you my dining room now, but on the way there, there's a treat that I think you might like. It's a little jewel box powder room that everyone seems to gravitate towards. Come this way. So step in here. So again, kind of going with our green, browns, blacks. This really is the ultimate green. Um, I chose to lacquer this because it's a dark room. I just need a little sparkle in here. This is my formal powder room. And instead of doing a wallpaper, um, I have this mini collection of all these little bitty landscapes that I've just picked up over the years at auction or estate sales or galleries. So I thought what better way to showcase them all than to just stack them really from the top of the wainscot to the ceiling and in lieu of a wallpaper. So there's still more room, believe it or not, for more paintings, but um, you get the gist of it. I love addressing a powder room because it is so essential. Uh, this is the room that everybody sees. It's the most public, obviously, bathroom. So don't skimp on design in a room like this. This is the room to be maximal, to max out your fantasy bathroom. I've really chose to do that with color and lacquer. Aside from the art in here, my favorite piece in the powder room is this gilded oyster shell chandelier with hand-painted oyster shells. Um, it really is a sculptural moment with a nod to the south. This is actually a found piece from a salvage yard. It's a wall-mounted Art Deco vanity. Uh, it didn't have a top or anything. I just um, I had a, I went to a remnant sale at a marble yard in case you ever need a fabulous marble for cheap. Wait till your local stone yard has a remnant sale. Anyway, this gorgeous marble fits on here and I dress it up with a vintage P.E. Guerin faucet um, that was broken um, from a former client, but I just took it to um, the local repair shop and they dressed it up for me. So it works just fine. I do have a favorite piece of art in here. It's actually this piece that I love walking by this room every single day and looking in here. It's just a beautiful Sicilian landscape. I'm Sicilian and so I was definitely drawn to this and it had a beautiful frame. This is something I scooped up at auction. I think doing the high gloss lacquer in a small room really gives a big impact. I think it expands the room visually somehow because of the mirroring sparkle effect of it. It doesn't make you feel so confined. And on top of that, why not just do a dark color too? I mean, people are afraid of dark colors in small spaces, but I think that a dark color on everything in a small room really makes the room feel larger it blurs sort of the architectural details of the space. It blurs the edges and the corners. And I think that really helps along with the lacquer. My design style for myself, I like to say is elevated estate sale finds, really. And I, I, I go with what I see and what I feel and what comes to me. 
I'm really patient. I have visions of things that I know that I want in my home and in my life and and they come. They you'll find them. I'll find it at an auction or an estate sale and it's my job to turn it into what you see here, sort of a collected experience, really. Now to the dining room. Excuse the mess. I'm setting up for a little small dinner I'm having here tonight, but I can show you some great linens and china while we're in here. You might notice that the dining room wall color is the same as the living room. I needed a unifying element, so I just chose this creamy bone white from Benjamin Moore. I thought it was the perfect backdrop for the two rooms to tie together. And as you saw in the living room, color comes from the upholstery and the fabrics. I wanted the dining room to be a little more severe and, uh, but still welcoming. Um, so I do love Biedermeyer. So you'll see Biedermeyer pieces kind of sprinkled throughout my house. Um, these, here we go. Here's our cheetah in this room. Um, I usually like to, this will be a set table setting for four. I really like to mix and match what I have. So older pieces with new pieces. These are some new things I had done at Lean Teen Linens here in New Orleans. And then these are the corresponding placemats. What are we serving for dinner? Actually, it's just going to be grilled skirt steaks with some vegetables. So simple. But I always like to set a table. If people are making the effort to come over here and we're all gonna you know, cook together and bring things, why not use all of these things that we've got? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little formal, but I don't know, why not? It's Sunday night. This is one of a pair. Um, I have a decorator friend of mine in Jackson, Mississippi, and I saw these at an antique shop in Jackson, and I knew they were I had a feeling that they were his, that he was consigning. And so I texted him a picture. I said, are these yours? And he goes, yeah. How did you know? I said, I just know. I said, I just bought them. So this is one of a pair. Um, it's this gorgeous solid green marble. Um, the other one is just in the guest room for now. I don't know what to do with it. But I love the way that it catches the light again. And it's really beautifully detailed. It's just, it's the most serious thing, I think, in the room. So this painting actually you know, going back to the theme of things coming into my life again. Um, this is a painting that I saw at a gallery a decade ago and I couldn't buy it then. And it sold in the course of the, the years. And then someone, I guess, sold it back to the gallery or put it back in the gallery on consignment. And here it is now. It's the one I wanted from the very beginning. It's a Jim Richard. He's another New Orleans artist, and he's known for these incredibly um, unique and layered interior paintings. They're sort of blurry, and this is the only one that I've seen that's actually black and white, and so I loved it. It's called Dark Decor. Um, anyway, so here it is, finally, in my home. Uh, so I love it. It's, like, it's uh, a, recent, a recent purchase. Um, so anyway, I feel like it really makes makes this room and I'm happy to have it now. Another great painting in this room is from a friend of mine, Kevin Gillantine. And this is uh, from his gallery on Magazine Street. I knew that I needed a giant piece of art here. They're, normally, I guess someone would put maybe a sideboard with lamps and a mirror or something, but there just really isn't room because going back to the layout of these shotgun houses you know it's room 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 so this really is a pathway back to the back of the house so uh, and visually this giant square really breaks up that long center wall that we talked about where we're punctuating to join the two residences together to one so i really love the way this catches the light i love the colors but yeah happy to have this so the the living room fireplace is the only fireplace that had actual original tile still. These other fireplaces in the house, as you'll see, had they just had some sort of weird builder white subway tile. So instead of just doing demo and tearing all of that out, I had my decorative painter come and do a faux marble. So each one has a different faux marble. So this is a Proturo faux marble. 
Um, it just really elevated the fireplace to the level of the rest of the dining room. So this fireplace, you really you can see from the front door, and you'll see that. Um, so I didn't want another thing hanging on a wall. So I mirrored this entire chimney breast with antique mirror and had these little pretty medallions made. Um, this also reflects the light behind you because there's only one window in this room. So it really does serve as like another window, basically. It brightens up the space. And then this is an old thrift store find. It's like a 1920s African head. Um, and I, had, I got this at a charity auction, this acrylic bracket. So anyway, I thought it made sort of a statement, a big sculptural statement. Just like another, instead of another painting, another rectangle, it's nice to have something three-dimensional. My favorite thing about this house is that it's a great house to have four people over for dinner, but it's also a great house to have 85 people for a fundraiser or a baby shower or whatever event. You can do anything in between because I love it because I have a room like this where I can have cocktails with close friends and it feels intimate. And I have a couple of different spots where I can dine for different size parties. I, I, that's what I love about the house. It's a great entertaining house. Welcome to the kitchen. Uh, this kitchen has had quite a transformation from when I first purchased the house, but I managed to do it without tearing out any cabinetry. Everything was just a white, white like Home Depot cabinetry. So I had my decorative painter do a striate glaze to make it all feel a little bit better than what it is. And then I changed out the hardware and I hand darkened each one of these brass knobs to give it some age. The counters were just like builder grade granite. So again, uh, remnant sale at your local stone yard. This is old soapstone and they somehow managed to just have enough to do the perimeter. This piece, I wanted to feel more like a piece of furniture, again, because all these rooms are so visually connected. It just felt so kitcheny to have just a kitchen island. So I had my carpenter do just a black walnut chopping block top, and then we lacquered the island for a furniture effect. And this also is just, you know, builder grade cabinetry that I had my carpenter do these simple shaker applied panels all around it to just elevate it and make it feel a little more expensive than what it really is. Um, I wish this kitchen was a little bit smaller, but here we are. I wish this kitchen was like a little secret galley kitchen that was all stainless steel and like black marble top. That's kind of my dream kitchen. But this kitchen is so front and center. I really wanted to feel as the least like a kitchen as possible. So I packed it out with art, as you can see on this wall. And these are just things I've collected over time that sort of end up on this organic art wall. This has been rehung about three times to accommodate, you know, things moving here and there, additions, subtractions. Uh, I love the way that this old patinaed 18th century cabinet felt in this room. I believe it was part of a room. It was built into like a room, like all four corners of the room probably had one of these, but this is really the only one that's left. So in here, I have this collection of these stoneware platters. I have a lot more, but um, these are the, these are from my grandmother's house. And I remember using these as a kid and I always loved them. They have this sort of crazy old patina on them. And I love that the gilding is a little bit worn off anyway. It makes me think of her whenever I use them. Um, so I thought this was a great spot for them. And then just down below in here, this is overflow like party glasses. This, these are the champagne flutes that you don't care if somebody breaks or just, you know, candles, like place setting things, just kind of a collection of party cups and champagne flutes. So it's a good way to hide all of that. So yeah, going with the non-kitchen kitchen. I really love this piece. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of art. And this is something that I coveted for a very long time. It's a George Dunbar and it's 
clay with palladium and gold um, on it and it's, it's so layered. Now that we've talked about my kitchen, follow me back into the more casual space of my home, the family room. Um, other than opening up the living room to that former third bedroom and creating the study, this is the space that has undergone um, a significant amount of architectural change as well. So initially this one set of French doors was here and it sort of created this like long, dark, corner of the house and I really wasn't able to center a sofa on the wall. So I added another set of near matching French doors where I, that I found at the bank, which is an architectural salvage place here in New Orleans. And luckily I found something almost exactly the same size. So it worked out. So now I have a center wall, the sofa anchored by a great uh, John Alexander painting that I love and more on that in a little bit. Other than the French doors, um, I added all of these built-in bookcases uh, in lieu of a small closet that was back here. So now um, I have a spot for all of my design library books. I have a lot more at the office, but you know, designers have books. So I was also able to finally put out all of these vintage AD magazines, Architectural Digest magazines that I use almost daily for design reference, inspiration. So here they are, and they continue over there. And of course I have a lot more at my office. Um, other than that, um, I get to showcase my favorite color for painting the insides of bookcases, which is Fowler and Ball Fox Red. I use it a lot um, for clients as well. And I think it's the perfect backdrop for leather bound books, objects, um, collections of things. It's a color, but it's not overwhelming. Um, lots of different ways to organize bookcases. I find that like a loose color blocking um, is a great way for me to visually corral all of these different objects here. So this is fun. Um, old school tech. However, it's great to have a record player and looks like Holiday uh, by America was the last thing we were listening to. So classic. This room is also great for small group entertaining. I really do love having four people for dinner back at this table. It really is an intimate setting. The light is so great early evening, especially with candlelight. And it just is a little relief from having a serious dinner in the dining room. Uh, this room is a multifunctional space. I mean, we do have to go outside through both of these doors. Uh, I've set up a bar over here just to give a purpose and some action to this side of the room. So this is an 18th century French piece that I got at auction that it, no one else bid on. Um, so that's how I got it. And I've used it as a bar cabinet. So it takes the pressure off of the kitchen really to house all of the th entertaining things. So down here I've got placemats, this middle drawer, we've got a color-coded collection of koozies. Always great to have. And then these top drawers are more usable and functional things like martini shakers, extra glassware, margarita salt, you know, everything to make a great cocktail. And it really gives this part of the room more of a destination where otherwise it would just be another dead corner. Um, here's our animal print moment for this room. As you know, every room in my house has something. This is an old club chair. It's an old Scalamandre model um, from Greg Jordan. So it's been in my life for a really long time. Back to the John Alexander. This is a piece um, going back to the theme of things coming back to, into my life. Um, I was actually bidding on this painting for our client several years ago at New Orleans auction and was outbid by a friend. Um, all is fair at the auction, right? So he was moving to Mexico City a year or so ago and asked me if I was still maybe interested in this John Alexander and would sell it to me for the hammer price. I said, absolutely, because it is a fantastic thing and it really never left my mind. So it did come back to me. Okay, welcome to my bedroom. 
Um, always a work in progress in here. It's sometimes very difficult for a designer to decorate for themselves. Um, and this room has been through about four different paint colors, ranging from sort of a desert tan called Alexandria beige, all the way through flower and balls, setting plaster and a couple of things in between. But I think we finally hit the right note with this milky chocolate brown color with the white trim to contain it. So I love a bedroom to feel like moody and intimate and dark. So I feel like I've accomplished that here with this color. A couple other things in here, um, bedding. So I do like to change out the bedding a couple of times a year. It gives the bedroom a whole new look. So this is my more fall winter bedding. And it's a combination of lean teen linens and some Ralph Lauren Paisley and a Matuk uh, coverlet. I don't ever really like to do a set of bedding. I like the bed to feel a little more, I don't know, collected in a way, for lack of a better term. Uh, but in the summer though, it's more of this. It's more just ivory, simple, clean. But in the winter, I like to have a few more layers uh, because as you know, New Orleans houses get very cold and very drafty in the winter months. There's no insulation anywhere. The bed is one of my favorite pieces in here. I did have it made uh, through Doorman Designs here in New Orleans. And I wanted sort of a loose masculine kind of vibe. And I thought this iron canopy bed would be the ticket. I did customize it a little bit by doing a leather upholstered headboard for a little more softness in here. So just the overall vibe in here is, like, is very personal to me. And I know I mentioned that this room is still in flux, which it is. Uh, these are the old curtains, which will have a new life in the guest room as soon as the new ones come in. Um, the fabric, of course, like everything else, is back ordered on a boat, on a crate, somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. But anyway, it'll get here eventually. I do love these curtains, though. These actually have been in my life for a very long time. Funny story, I pulled them out of a dumpster on a job site 25 years ago, and they were about twice as long. So obviously I had them cleaned and shortened. Um, so they've been somehow in some way, shape or form in my homes since then. So they'll keep, they'll keep living in a different room. The word home means somewhere where I can be myself, express, my design sensibilities and have the people that I care about and love around me in a comfortable and elegant way. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.